I think I might have trained my brain to sleep to the sound of Bella's lullaby. It's like a drug to me. I like my own personal brand of- Mortal embarrassment. Hello, sorry, just jumping in from the future here. Um, I filmed this yesterday and straight after I finished filming, I started getting messages from people <laughs> telling me that Stephanie Meyer has announced that she is releasing Midnight Sun, which if you didn't know, is basically Twilight from Edward's perspective and a few chapters of it got leaked years and years ago and she had a bit of a fit about it and decided not to release it, but now she has decided that she is releasing it. <laughs> it just seems absolutely insane that I filmed this whole video about how nuts I went for Twilight with my weird Twilight sixth sense that something was about to happen. So just while you watch this, please know that I didn't know that information, but now I do and I'm absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Thank you, goodbye. Good afternoon. <laughs> we are gathered here today to discuss something nobody asked for. The thing is, when you're making 31 videos in a row, they're not all gonna be... They're not all gonna be good. <laughs> Since the Disney mug that I had in the first one of these May videos seemed to be a big hit. Today's mug is 101 Dalmatians themed, as we can see. Let's see if I can actually get it to focus. There we go. Here's the mug. And... There we are. Honestly, I'm so obsessed with these, like, classic Disney mugs. Right. I'm sure we all did embarrassing things as teenagers. I certainly did. <laughs> Sometimes when I think about the people who knew me in high school from the ages of about 12 to about 23, I turned 24 last week, I think, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> One of the key reasons for that is the fact that I have an incredibly, like, obsessive personality. Um, I just f like something and I run with it. And I think one of the first instances of that for me was Twilight. I was one of those teenagers who never wanted to be like on the trend as it happened. This is a recurring theme. Spoiler, I end up harder on the trend than anyone else I know. And Twilight is the first example probably of that. Um, so, picture the scene. Everybody goes mad when Twilight comes out in the cinema. I obviously never read the book. And I was like, Ugh, vampires, I just don't get it. I'm not interested, I don't wanna know. So I didn't watch it at all. And then, months after the release, months after, when everyone else was either really involved or completely over it, I then decided that then was the time to watch it. And I watched it on a plane. This flight was from London to Miami, which let's see how long that flight is. I think it's about eight hours. Nine hours 45, worse than I thought. So I'd made such a big fuss about how bad I thought Twilight was, despite having never seen it, and how much I didn't wanna know, that I couldn't possibly tell anyone that I was going to watch it. Because this is the thing, I always say I don't want to do the thing, that secretly back here I do, but I've made so much of a fuss by that point that I just can't. I started watching the film as soon as we took off. I remember it vividly. And I watched the film back to back for the entirety of the flight. I'm just realizing that this is near enough exactly how my Justin Bieber obsession started. So I watched this film over and over and over and then the second we get to Miami airport, I'm like, I need a WH Smith. Obviously they don't have WH Smith in America, but the sentiment was there. And I went straight to a bookshop before we even left the airport and I bought Twilight. I read the book again, back to back, two straight weeks, and I would not put it down. And at this point, it was getting quite bad. I then watched the film once again, back to back on the flight on the way home. So by the time we reached UK soil, a monster had been formed. <laughs> So I just wanted to give you a few instances from that time period so you can grasp the true severity of this issue. <laughs> First of all, the most minor of the bunch, I just would not put the book down. I nearly got hit by cars trying to cross the road while I was reading. I would read, I, I missed my bus stop so many times because I was reading it on the bus and I just wouldn't even look up. Um, obviously by this point I had the whole saga, but still it was only four books. And I. I genuinely don't think I read another book for three years. Like it was just Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, back to back. And 
I look at it now and I think, you're not gay, are you? <laughs> and I really vividly remember crying every single time Edward left in New Moon, as if it was a shock to me. <laughs> and honestly, I think the thing that's the most baffling about all of this is the fact that I don't think I'm a particularly romantic person. Like, but some for some reason I was so invested in their relationship specifically. It's a bad relationship, guys. It's not good. What was I thinking? Earlier this year, everybody was sharing their, you know, their like Spotify wrapped things. So like it gave you a summary of the songs that you've listened to the most for the decade and how long you've listened to them for. <laughs> I don't think I can get through this sentence. So <laughs> here's the problem. I used to have a lot of problems sleeping and I found a solution that helped me very much, which was listening to Bella's Lullaby on repeat. Not only to fall asleep, but while I slept. <laughs> it's so weird. And so I I think, to be fair, it's a lovely piece of music. Like, credit to the Twilight films, their soundtrack is great. But I would listen to Bella's Lullaby every single night for about eight or nine hours a night. So when it came to my Spotify wrapped, I wish I had a screenshot of it because I was mortified to find that despite the fact that this all stopped by the mid 2010s, <laughs> Bella's Lullaby was still my number one most listened to song of the decade because it had thousands of hours of listening time <laughs> from when I was asleep. I think that's quite bad. <laughs> I think actually because I came to associate that song with sleeping, even now when I hear it, I genuinely think I get a bit drowsy. I don't know whether it's like a placebo thing or what, but I think I might have trained my brain to sleep to the sound of Bella's lullaby. And that's, that's not good. I once made my dad pull a cardboard cutout of Robert Pattinson out of a bin in Covent Garden so that I could have it in my bedroom for the next year and a bit. I would dress with specific character like inspiration every day so like one day I'd be Bella, one day I'd be Alice, one day I'd be Rosalie and I would spend all of my money. There was one specific shop in Norwich called the TV and movie store that just sold, well not just, but that sold so much Twilight merch. We're talking like Twilight little choker necklaces, rings, bracelets, t-shirts, um, bags, everything. And every single time I went into the city by myself as a teenager or with like friends, I would come home with like more, just more Twilight rubbish that I didn't need. And every single time I remember my mum was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was always like, what mum, I wear it every day. And to be fair to me, I did. And I will end on the story that does actually seem to, it's its really the nail in the coffin. <laughs> so how do I have any friends? How did I have any friends? <laughs> I once went on a school trip. I used to be part of like all the choirs and stuff at school and we used to do these music tours where we went to different places in Europe and we sang in different like churches and venues. And we went to St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice, which is where a scene is set. Is that even true? I don't know, but I thought it was. <laughs> As we've now established, I had seen the films constantly for years, to the point where I genuinely believed that I could watch them in my head. Like I didn't need the film, I didn't need any help, I could just close my eyes and watch them. And I used to do that a lot, like if I finished writing for an exam early, I'd just be like, Cool, I'll watch now. <laughs> so I remember literally crying standing in like St Mark's Square or whatever it's called because I was like oh, It's sad that I found Edward again when they've been separated for so long And then we went to this talk or something and I spent the whole time with my eyes shut How rude when someone is talking to you for starters I spent the whole time with my eyes shut watching Twilight So then everyone said to me after this talk why did you have your eyes shut the whole way through? And I was like, it's watching Twilight. And everyone was like, well, you weren't. And I was like, no, I was. And they were like, well, you can't, you can't just watch a film in your head. And I was like, I can. And nobody believed me. So I was like, right, I'm going to prove it. So we were driving home from Italy on a coach and I stopped, the first service station that we stopped at was like a 24, 28, 
hour drive maybe the first services that we stopped at that was about an hour into the journey i went into the services i bought a notebook i bought a pen and i spent the rest of the journey didn't sleep didn't do anything just spent the rest of the journey sat there writing the twilight script into a book <laughs> I don't think I got quite to the end by the time we arrived but I was not far off and I was showing it to people being like look and everyone was like yeah we don't actually care. So I finished it off and then I checked it and it was correct. I think there were two or three little discrepancies where I switched some words around or like the slight order of the lines was wrong but I'm telling you now I had Twilight, the, the movie, from beginning to end, stored in my brain. <laughs> I went to all of the midnight screenings and stuff like that. The, the midnight screening for Breaking Dawn Part 2, I actually haven't seen the film since because I found it so traumatic. <laughs> so, uh, I should probably watch it again at some point, but I cried for hours <laughs> after I came out of that screening. Anyway, this has been a video. I didn't mean to talk for this long. I hope you enjoyed it, because I'm mortified. Please let me know if you have any similar experiences. I'm going to end the video on a tweet of mine from 2012. Thank you for coming to today's video. I hope to see you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. Do you like how I spoke about this all in the past tense, but now there's a new book coming out and we all know that I'm probably going to regress? Help.